Hi, I'm Anfa. In this video, I'll show you everything you'll need to know when running Ardor 5 for the first time. Let's go! In the previous video, I've shown what Ardor is and what it can do. In this one, I'll guide you through the initial configuration. When you run Ardor for the first time, it'll open a short wizard. First, it will ask you about the default folder for new sessions. I guess that's quite self-explanatory. You can always move your sessions later, so don't sweat it too much. The second screen is about audio monitoring. By default, Ardor will use software monitoring or software playthrough, as it's sometimes called. The alternative is to make Ardor abstain from monitoring and let your audio interface do it instead. That's called hardware or zero latency monitoring. I use software monitoring because that lets me listen to my performance with added effects. And that can be very inspiring, so I'll go with the default here. The third question lets you use an additional monitoring section in your sessions by default. You probably don't need it if you're just starting out with Ardor. The last part of the wizard lets you scan your system for plugins before going forth so Ardor knows what's available. You can skip that, however. Once you click Apply, you'll be greeted with the Session Setup dialog, so you can create your first Ardor session. We can choose a session template, session's location on disk, and its name. I'm going to leave everything at default and just give the session a name. Now I need to click Open or just press Enter. Because we haven't configured the input-output yet, Ardor will now open the Audio MIDI Setup dialog. To be able to do anything, we need to configure that so Ardor can talk to the sound hardware. The available options here will depend on your operating system and connected devices. On Linux, you'll see ALSA and Jack audio backends. On Mac OS X, there'll be Core Audio and Jack, and on Windows, Port Audio. And Jack! I'm running Linux, so my two options for audio backend are ALSA and Jack. ALSA is the recommended option as it's simple to use. However, Using ALSA will give Ardor exclusive access to your sound card. No other software will be able to play or capture any sound when Ardor is using it. Let's first configure the ALSA backend. I select my external audio interface, both for input and output. Currently in Ardor 5, when using the ALSA backend, you can't use different devices for input and output. You can use two devices with the jack backend, however. Below we can choose our sampling rate. This is important because each Ardor session gets its sampling rate determined during creation. It's impossible to change that later. All audio will be recorded with this sampler rate, so if you choose 44.1, you need to run your audio interface at 44.1 to work on that session again. You can't just switch to 48 kHz at will. Okay, you can try and open a session with a mismatched sampler rate, but it's most likely going to completely fall apart, and Ardor will warn you about that. Not a good idea. I've personally chosen to use 48 kHz for all my sessions. The sampler rate mismatch can be an issue, especially if you want to exchange Ardor sessions with other people, as everyone involved has to use the same sampling rate to be able to work on a mutual project. It's good to determine that before you start a collab. Next, we have the buffer size. Bigger buffer means higher latency, but also lower CPU usage. The rule of thumb is use the smallest buffer that your system can handle without dropouts. If you set it too low, the sound will become a crackly mess. If you set it too high, the delay will become distracting. Ardo will conveniently translate this value to time in milliseconds. For recording with software monitoring, you'll need no higher than 256 samples, as anything more will create an unbearably high latency. If you use hardware monitoring, you can pretty much go with whatever you want, really, as long as you can follow the beat. I tend to use between 128 and 
1024 samples, depending on the project. For complex sound design or recording without software playthrough, I'd go for the latter as it allows me to put a much higher load on my system before I have any dropouts. As you can see there's more options below that, but I'll skip the rest for now as we already have got everything we need to be able to proceed. Let's click start. And here's our new session. But let me go back and take the other route. The second option is using the Jack audio server. Jack is an amazing tool, but it's not always easy to configure and get running properly. I have already configured and started my Jack server, so when I select it, I can just click connect to Jack. And we're ready to go. But in case you don't have your Jack server running, Ardor can start it for you. Let's take a look. As you can see, we can select the audio driver. The default one here is ALSA. You might be thinking right now, wait a minute, I thought you were using Jack, not ALSA. And you'd be right. But Jack is a middleman between the audio driver and the software, like Ardor. ALSA provides drivers for most USB and PCI audio interfaces today. You can select other drivers as well. OSS and FreeBob are legacy drivers. FFADO is a driver for Firewire-based audio interfaces. NetJack is for distributing a jack system across a local network. And Dummy will allow you to proceed without using any audio devices. But you'll have no sound, obviously. As you can see, the rest of the settings are identical between Jack and Alsa audio systems. That's all for now. In the next video, I'll start breaking down the user interface. I hope this video was worth your time. If you want more, subscribe. I also invite you to check out my own YouTube channel, where I cover other open source music production related topics. If you haven't already, go to ardor.org and download Ardor right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.